Ah, 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 ah. Hey everybody, Mark Johnson here, founder and creative director of Able Ape Studios, back again with another episode of Here's to Your Weekend, episode number 60, I believe. Yes, yes, yes. So yeah, hope everyone's had a positive and productive week. We're back at it. Um, yeah, as for my week, uh, not your typical week. I would say not my, not my typical week. Not my typical week in the sense that um, you know, as much as I did, you know, as much as I did, I had a situation that kind of derailed that a little bit, so it wasn't as smooth and, uh, um, you know, had a heavy heart in a sense, you know, a lot on my mind. Um, for those who know, you know, um, you maybe seen other videos, uh, maybe you even watched some of my SSS beta videos, vlog every day in, in April or August videos, and so you gotta understand a little bit more about myself and for those who don't know I am a spinal cord injury I'm a C5 C6 um, injury from a car accident um, back in 94 95 and um, with that being said um, I do need help you know I do need help daily to kind of get me situated where I can kind of manage for myself or at least manage the rest of the day until someone else comes to help me out to bed and um, I've had a few over the years I've had many providers I call them care providers I guess that's what they're called providers however you want to call it um, and it takes a certain type of pe person to be able to do it you know, honestly let's just be real not just anyone off the street could do it you know in theory that is true but you know for a long term um, it takes a certain person you know caring person and a little bit of understanding type of a person to do it you know to kind of say just do this job for, for the money they probably wouldn't last very long you know um, it's not very uh, how do you say strenuous but there's things that you know do take a little bit of uh, strength you know to kind of do it from range of motion um, you know some things are just tedious and so it's just you know working through that on a day-to-day -day basis but that is how I'm able to maintain my day-to-day -day through the care providers that do come in to help me out um, on a daily basis every day you know saying there's not a day off I don't get days off uh, on this you know what I'm saying so um, in my experience of having to find my own people you know I usually go do a Craigslist ad I know through the, the, the their services where they have a registry and stuff like that but I've never really used that as much as you know posting Craigslist ad and relying on recommendations from other people um, the reason I might be talking about this is because this past week the bombshell that dropped <laughs> the bombshell that dropped was that one of the long-term providers that I've had for about two years, maybe going on a third year, um, decided to put in their two weeks. Um, when it came down to it, their reasoning uh, was pretty petty and definitely spiteful, I would say, in the sense that it really only had to do with the situation that another provider that was working, that they don't work together, so they're not, they don't see each other, um, it's not like that. It's more one person works a shift, another person works a shift. So they didn't really have to work together. But this one provider decided to put in their two weeks because they felt they couldn't get along with that one. And when I say get along, it's more or less about being able to, in a sense, I think it's quid pro quo, where if you do something for me, I'll do something for you. And they felt that that wasn't an equal situation. At least that's what they're telling me, you know, because when it really came down to it, it was just they wanted to do what they wanted to do, and uh, they felt they weren't going to get to do it, you know, regardless. So it had nothing to do with me. It had nothing to do with the work, the actual work. She was willing to do it and probably continue to do it, you know. Um, she asked me to let, you know, to get rid of that person. So then, again, that just shows me that it's a situation of their personal preference and I would say also that you know in my experience I've also done things to accommodate them you know as much as my needs are my needs there's ways that I can accommodate them you know like giving them a schedule that they like you know um, um, giving them the hours that they like or that they prefer you know adding on to that you know you know adding 
you know, hours so that they can get gasoline paid for. Those kind of things. Um, you know, Ivy went further than that on this time around by rearranging my space, my home, where I live. You know, this is my space. It's, you know, they don't pay rent here. They don't really do anything other than that than, you know, help keep it tidy. And I went through a stage of just basically making it so minimalist, taking things down, you know, in a sense like artwork, you know, complaining about artwork. I'm, art, I'm an artist. This is artwork that I create. It means something to me. You know what I'm saying? Um, magazines. I don't know. I just kind of went the extra mile to try to accommodate the needs of this person. And I, and, and I don't know if you know it was needs or if they were just kind of, you know, trying to be a controlling type person, but I did it anyway, feeling that it would make them feel recognized in the things that they felt uh, they needed so that they could continue working. I'll say now I won't do that ever again because it just kind of put me in a situation for myself where I was uncomfortable in my own home, like where I live, you know what I'm saying? You know, I had to cater to this person just to keep them happy because that's what it felt like. You know, I'm doing all these different things, you know, like I wanted to do this on this day, but no, I can't do it on this day because they are not prepared. And then they'll put it on me and say, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't communicate with them that uh, this is what I wanted to do on this day. You know, grocery shopping. Okay, I want to do it on this day. Uh, it doesn't work for me. Can you do on this day? Or not even that, because I we will agree on a day, and then they'll come back to me and say we'll do it on this day. So again, I'm trying to be flexible. I'm trying to be accommodating. I'm trying to be do the things that you would think would keep someone around. And yeah, it kept them around for a little bit, but like again, in the end, it had nothing to do with me. It was a situation where they dropped out because they felt they couldn't get along with this other person and you know to make that the, your reason and your sole reasoning because there's you know all, there's plenty of other things you could have claimed that was a reason but when it comes down to it it's simple as that so yeah that made me feel a little a little bit a little bent out of shape you know no doubt you know, I bent and 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 I accommodated, 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 and accommodated, and in the end, it had nothing to do with me. So all that stuff that I did, I could have not done it, and you know, I probably could have got the same output or the same out, you know, you know, outcome. That said, I'm not, you know, down that I'm, you know, it's the end of the world. I'm not doing that. Um, and I think the reason I'm not doing that is because I watched two movies within the last two weeks that kind of gave me an insight that really uh, made me feel like this is the way to go. And those were movies were The Martian and Gravity. I don't know if you've seen those movies, but if you see those movies, they're both space movies. They both happen to be space movies. Uh, but it's not really about the space. It's more about the idea of problem solving in the face of a catastrophe or you know a situation that looks a little tough on the outlook. But at the same time, um, being mindful enough to quiet all those emotions that are telling you to go crazy and, you know, it's the end of the world. But taking that energy and putting it to solving the problem. You know, if you see Martian, they, what is his name, Matt Damon's character is left on Mars. So they're able to go to Mars and they're searching it out and doing whatever. They have to leave in a rush and he gets left. You know, he's still alive. He still has the stuff that was maintaining the crew while they were there. So he figures out a way to kind of maintain that until he can get the next ride back, which will be in four years. Because, you know, I don't understand space 100%, you know, but basically, you know, leaving Earth and going out into space, light years, I guess that's what we're talking about, um, the next troop or the next scheduled trip would have been four years. So he needed to maintain and grow food on an Earth that doesn't grow shit. Okay, so he figures a way out and things look good for a while, um, but just like in life, things uh, don't always go as planned, and so some things happen. In Gravity, uh, Sandra Bolt's character um, is part of a crew that is um, total abort mission, and in their aborting of the mission, they get scattered in space. Some people die, but they get scattered in space, and 
So they're just kind of floating in space. They're alive. I think George Clooney, yeah, George Clooney's in the movie as well. And so they group together to find a plan to get to a space station, a banded space station that still has life a little bit. You know, like it still has oxygen, it still has a ship that can get them back to Earth. And so their plan is to get back to Earth. And so they, they work through these things and it doesn't always go again. It doesn't always, it looks good for a second and then it's like something happens. That's kind of what life's like, you know. Um, and so that's kind of really the main point that I'm trying to put here is that I'm faced with some stuff that for me, again, is kind of dire. You know, again, I need the help every day. There's no days off. Um, you know, I can try to put it on one person, but again, that's a lot. You know, um, yeah, for one person, that's a lot. You know, um, so that's why I have the help. Um, and again, to understand why I may be facing this situation, just kind of really me, for me, devalues or, you know, makes me devalue the relationship that I built with the person that put me in the situation in, in the first place. But regardless of all that, regardless of all that, what I need to do is I take that energy and put it towards solving the problem. And the problem is I need to find the, the people I need to do it. So that's why uh, this past week when I uh, posted on Facebook, you know, I had a Craigslist ad already out, but I had to post on Facebook because I felt that I needed to get that a little bit more urgent and also a little bit more people who know me and then help. Hopefully they know someone else so they can spread it. So I know through Facebook I could get that. So that's why I posted on Facebook this week. So I was proactive. You know, I took the gut wrenching uh, uh, feelings uh, that I was feeling about this person and the situation they put me in. Um, and I use that energy towards problem solving. And again, that process was because I watched two movies that made me think about that. So yeah, so that's where I'm at. Uh, I think I was still productive with the things that I've been doing. You know, I you know wrote every day, draw. You know, do the drawing every day, sketch every day. Um, I posted two posts this week that I felt were on time, Monday and uh, Thursday. I'm doing this post. Um, you know, even as I'm doing this post, there was someone scheduled to come by today to kind of talk about um, about working, but they haven't showed up. They said they'd show up around four, or actually three, but now it's like past five o'clock, going on six. So we'll see how the rest of this week goes. You know, again, I'm keeping it a positive outlook, and not like this whack ass like I'm positive, I'm on positive. No, I'm keeping a positive outlook. You know, I'm keeping it positive in the sense that. You know, being proactive keep, gives me a feeling of a little bit of control as much as, you know, it does feel out of control. Um, I think at the same time, you know, having the positive outlook is also keeping me, when I want to say some things, from saying some things. You know, it's allowing me to, um, and not just say, again, not just say the positive thing, but say how I really feel in a way where it's not, again, demeaning to someone else or coming off crude. You know, pretty simple. Um, so yeah, I feel good, you know, in, in the week that I'm still main, able to maintain, um, I definitely learned some things for the next time around. So I'm optimistic that the next time around I can actually tailor it, tailor my schedule to something that more fits me, regardless of, you know, what the per other person's need, you know, bending up so that it, again, quid pro quo, that it helps them as much as it helps me. But not bend so much where I'm bending, I'm bending, I'm bending, and I'm not happy in my own space. You know what I'm saying? I'm not comfortable in my own space anymore because I've had to change it so much to accommodate someone else that in the end didn't really give enough of a care, understanding the situation that you're putting me in, to really only be petty and spiteful and then, <laughs> and then claim that this is the path that God puts you on. Okay, so... I don't need to go all into that, but whether you believe in God or you don't believe in God, or you believe a little bit, but you don't, you know, so much that, you know, he's every second he's ruling your life. I think there's, I think like this, and I'll probably end it on this. I think that whole thing is to show, you know, when you have trials and you have tribulations, it's to try, it's there to show you how to deal with tough times. Again, problem solving, you know, say, I don't think... God, universe, whatever you want to call it, 
allows us to go through these things. You know, and you, you know, people talk about the devil and how he's trying to create stuff. Okay, whatever the case. If you want to go that far, I don't want to go that far. I just want to say that there's a God. I believe that there's a God, that there's a, a, a power that uh, kind of got us here, right? And the trials and tribulations that we go through is only a matter to make us stronger so that we can come out in the end better people. Pretty simple. You know, I don't think God's going, you know, you know, nitpicking over here and over here and over here, you know, saying just to kind of ta just tassel up. I'm sure there's a plan and there's probably a purpose, but I think those things are really up for us to decide on our own. Again, I'm not trying to take the place of God, but I think when you go through a certain amount of things and they keep leading to a certain direction, that's probably your purpose. You know what I'm saying? Here's a quote from Tony Robbins, and he said, when you can take your worst day and realize how it was your best day, then you know what you're meant to do. You know what I'm saying? I think that's something that I've learned in my experience because, you know, I've gone so through some things that, you know, for just a normal person, like, they wouldn't want this. They wouldn't want to deal with this. You know what I'm saying? If there's anything that I know that people don't want to be, people don't want to be disabled. They want to have some control over what they can do. You know what I'm saying? They want to be able to have some control. And so for me, I'm pretty much at the mercy <laughs> of the people who help me out. And when you put it that way, it kind of makes... You know, anyone from the outside like, yo, nah, I don't want that. You know what I'm saying? So if there's anything I know that people don't want to be, people don't want to be disabled. You know what I'm saying? But that's the life that I'm living. And so I can, you know, be bitter and, you know, talk crap about people. And, you know, just kind of, yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Everyone knows the, 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 the stereotypical type person in a wheelchair. If you're not met a person in a wheelchair, well, I mean, I didn't meet, I have never met a person in a wheelchair until I was a person in a wheelchair. <laughs> so there you go. Um, so that's where I'm at this week, yo. That's where I'm at this week. This one's gone a little bit long, but I think it's a rant that needs to be ranted. So um, if you like this video, definitely give me a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing, channel, definitely subscribe. And um, if you want to share with me uh, how your past week went, whether you had some wins, whether you had some losses, maybe you had some trials and some tribulations like I had, uh, definitely leave that in the comment box below. And I'll definitely comment and uh, hopefully we can start a conversation back and forth. So, like we always do at this time, have a blessed day. See you on the flip side. Let's go.